Okay, I thank the organizers for organizing a wonderful conference here in Korea and also for inviting me to give this talk. Um, so most of what I say will... Uh, it's not advancing, I don't know. Oh. Uh, most of what I say will be based on a paper I wrote with Lenny and some aspects of what I say will be based on a paper I wrote with Tom Hartman. Um, so you've probably all seen this, uh, the Penrose diagram of uh, the eternal black hole. This is the maximal analytic continuation of the Schwarzschild solution. Um, it um, contains two asymptotic regions. So here the space is asymptotically flat. There are two asymptotically flat spaces and they are joined through the horizon of a black hole. Um, and this, this slice here at uh, t equal to zero is sometimes called the Einstein-Rosen bridge. This is a slice which uh, has, um, has this form. We have two asymptotically flat spaces. And then if you come in, the two sphere shrinks up to the size of the horizon and then connects to a second asymptotically uh, R3 uh, three-dimensional space. Um, so uh, we can also consider similar things in ADS. Um, and so we have, again, the two exterior regions and uh, two interior regions. Um, and in this case, uh, we know what uh, state is describing this. Is, uh, oh, oops. Yeah. Um, I pressed the wrong button. Oh, good. Um, it's, uh, this is described by uh, an entangled state in the two uh, CFTs. So we have a sum over all the microstates of the right, the CPT conjugates of uh, those same states on the left, and uh, we sum them with the usual thermal factors. Um, so that's a well-defined quantum state. The two field theories are non-interacting, um, but they, we have an entangled state similar to an EPR, um, EPR pair. Um, and then the, the entanglement entropy uh, of this uh, particular EPR pair is equal to the area of the horizon over 4G Newton. So that's just the entropy of the field theory, of the thermal field theory. Um, now, this uh, same geometry can also be given a wormhole interpretation by thinking... So, so now I'm going back to the, the problem in flat space, so the, the first Penrose diagram I drew. Uh, and we can think of those uh, two asymptotically R3 regions as living in the same uh, in the same space time so this will be an approximate um, this will be an approximate solution um, to to gr so some approximate initial conditions for this configuration of course there is a small force between the two black holes but that can be made very small by separating the two black holes by a very long distance um, so here we have two black holes with uh, two horizons and the geometry here at t equal to zero is identified through the horizons. So if you start in the neighborhood of one of the horizons, by moving a very short spatial distance, you can get to the outside region of the other black hole, um, uh, even though the two black holes are separated by a very long distance. Similarly, if you calculate the expectation value of quantum fields for two points that are close to the horizon, but outside both horizons, then the this two-point function, let's say in four dimensions, will go like one over the short distance, so the distance through the wormhole squared. Um, oh, again. Um, now, this, uh, w even though this a point here and a point here are separated by a short spatial distance at t equal to zero, so that would be a point here and a point on this side, they are separated by a short distance. Nevertheless, we cannot uh, physically go from the outside of one black hole to the outside of the other black hole. So for this reason, you can also use this wormhole to uh, transfer signals, to send signals faster than the speed of light, or even to move uh, yourself faster than the speed of light. And that you can see easily from this Penrose diagram. So when you try to go in, um, what happens is that the area of the two sphere shrinks, and so you hit the singularity. So in some sense, what you can say is that the wormhole shrinks before you can go to the other side. Um, or another thing you could say is that you see these two horizons are receding from each other. They're moving the spatial, the proper distance between two points along these horizons are growing. 
Um, so they are moving faster than you can move yourself to get to the other side. So even though the two are coinciding here, as, you, as time evolves, they are getting more and more separated. Um, now this, this looks like a very artificial, uh, so this state that we have here, uh, of course, if you form two black, two random black holes, they will not be in this very special state. They will not be in this so-called thermofield state. This is a very special state in the whole Hilbert space of the uh, of the two black holes. Um, now, so that might lead you to wonder where we can ever have two black holes which are in such a state. Um, but there is a way to naturally produce black holes in this state, um, and that uh, happens when you produce black holes by pair creation in a magnetic field. So imagine you have a constant uh, magnetic field, um, then the production of a pair, if a pair is given, if, if it were producing just point particles as opposed to black holes, the production mechanism will be given by an instant on um, that describes the Schwinger pair creation. It's just a circle, so it's a charged particle moving on a circle in this um, magnetic field. And in the black hole case, instead of having a particle, we have a, a black hole. Um, so far away, it looks like a particle. Uh, but when you get to the near horizon geometry, you have a whole near horizon geometry, which is, um, in this case, the, the black holes are charged, and so they are near extremal black holes. And so it's a geometry close to ADS, and has a form roughly like a cup like this, that joint, that's the radial direction going towards the horizon. Um, the horizon would be here at the center. And um, and also the angular direction here. Um, so and this distance can be much longer than this other distance. So so it's the opposite than this diagram suggests. So this diagram suggests this distance is longer, but it's actually shorter. I couldn't see how to draw it. Uh, my artistic abilities are not good enough to uh, draw here this cup shorter than the other one. And then well, the Lorentzian evolution is uh, is obtained by just cutting at equal to zero. Um, now, so the interpretation of these wormholes is then that we have this EPR pair of two black holes in a particular entangled state. And so one thing we can see here is that uh, large amounts of entanglement uh, can give rise to a geometric connection. So the geometry of space-time depends on uh, the amount of entanglement we have. And in some situations, like with black holes and so on, we can actually get a geometric connection. Um, and so we might think that um, um, in some cases, we might get an actual geometry given by Einstein's equations. In some other situations, maybe we get some very quantum geometry which doesn't have an Einstein uh, equation, um, a description in terms of Einstein's equations. So if you're if you willing to accept these very quantum geometries, then even the spin a half uh, particle is maybe connected by a very quantum bridge. And, um, so this is a very speculative thing. Um, um, now, um, both uh, EPR and uh, these wormholes, uh, these Einstein-Rosen bridges, um, cannot be used to send signals. So we have some spooky action at the distance, but we cannot send signals. So if we have Alice and Bob sitting outside these black holes, they, uh, they cannot talk to each other. However, uh, they could each uh, jump inside and then uh, actually meet. It would be a fatal meeting, case of fatal attraction. Um, but um, uh, but they can do this. So uh, I noticed that um, here in the interior, the operators here in the interior are presumably constructed from the microstates of both black holes. These are very separated. They're very distant from each other. Um, and certainly these black holes, from the interior point of view, they don't commute with each other. The operators uh, that these observers meet, the look at, they don't commute with each other. But nevertheless, in some way, they are constructed. In some way, we don't understand from the two sides. So this was just a side comment. Um, and in this case, so the interior, we're making the interior in some way out of the two, uh, the microstates of both black holes. Um, notice that uh, if we evolve in time into, into to the future, so in the, yeah, maybe I should say that this geometry has a certain isometry, which are which is boosts around this point. So we can evolve forward in time here and backwards in time here. And uh, that is an isometry. And so physics doesn't depend on that, uh, so, so on that evolution. However, in this interpretation, in terms of a wormhole, we'd like to evolve forwards in time on both sides. And 
when we do that, the, this geometry looks time dependent. So this is a time dependent geometry. And indeed, for example, if uh, Alice and Bob de decide to jump at t equal to zero, then they meet. If they decide to jump at a later time, then uh, they will not meet. Um, Now it's interesting to uh, think about um, about the spread of the entanglement uh, yeah. of um, that happens when you evolve in time. So actually, this uh, particular entangled state that describes the thermal field double is well some very very specific state, and it's interesting to look at its time evolution and uh, see what uh, happens with the, this state. Now, at t equal to zero, the entanglement between uh, the degrees of freedom outside each horizon is very local. And uh, you can make this even more precise if you consider an ADS-CST setup with a temperature much bigger than the size of, uh, of a temperature which is big compared to uh, the space, the size of space. So this is a spatial direction across the horizon, along the horizon, and the degrees of freedom on uh, near one horizon are locally entangled with the degrees of freedom on the other side. Okay, And that's what happens at t equal to zero. And as time evolves, so let's evolve just forwards in time in one only one of the sides. Uh, what happens is that the entanglement becomes much more delocalized. So localized, localized degrees of freedom here are entangled not with localized degrees of freedom here, but with degrees of freedom that are completely spread out uh, in the here in the right side. Um, and so if you instead consider two localized degrees of freedom here and here, uh, they will not be very much uh, entangled with each other. So the entanglement will not be maximal. And that's related to the decay of correlation functions, since there is a certain bound on the size of correlation functions and the amount of mutual information. Um, and, and it's related to remarks that Van, Van Ransdonk uh, made in the past. Um, so in some sense, this uh, spread of entanglement seems to is uh, very directly connected to this uh, growth of the spatial direction or the spatial distance between these two points. Um, and indeed, one can make this even more precise by looking at the Ruta Kayanagi formula. Um, and indeed, you find that uh, the entanglement is related to surfaces that spread that um, that are stretched between these two points. Um, Um, it's not advancing, let me see. Okay. So now, so far I've described one particular entangled state and I was talking about the time evolution. So here, let me give a more precise, uh, I must have turned this off. Um, yeah, yeah that, that's fine, this one is fine. So uh, the time evolution we were talking about is in terms of formulas. So we had the, this initial state here, we are just simply adding these phases and this is just time evolving the state into the future. Um, now, the way we think about, uh, so, and all these are different states, so notice that uh, depending on time we get different states, different ent entangled states, okay? They differ by a simple amount, by simply these phases, but these are, sta are states in the Schrodinger picture, they are different. So what's the bulk uh, interpretation of each of these states? So the idea is that uh, the state at t equal to zero is describing, na naively we would say that the state at t equal to zero is describing the t equal to zero slice in this geometry. And then at t different from zero it will be some other slice. But here we could choose many different slices and it's not clear why we choose this one. So in fact, um, the measurements along uh, all of these slices are related by the bulk uh, wheeler the wheat equation or the bulk Hamiltonian constraint, so they're all essentially gauge equivalent. So it's reasonable to consider this whole space-time geometry as uh, related to the state at, um, at t equal to zero. So and then uh, when we evolve in time, so let's say we evolve in time forwards on the two sides, then we have this whole space-time geometry that would be related to the state at a bigger value of time. Um, and these two are different. So if we have uh, the the bridge, so this yellow region we are calling the bridge. Uh, the bridge at t equal to zero is given by this state with t equal to zero here. The bridge at t bigger than zero is given by this other uh, geometry. They are, these two geometries again are different. So for example, here we have only one point of the singularity. Here we have a whole region of the singularity. Here this was reaching at the past singularity, here it's not. 
uh, and so on. Alternatively, we can just think of this evolution as evolving just forwards in time here. This is just, these two are related by the overall isometry uh, that we had, the boost isometry of this space time. And one uh, simple observation also is that uh, there are some, some regions, like this region A, is present in both, both states, both this state and also this, this bridge state. So the same region can be present in various states. Um, yeah, this one is fine. Yeah. Um, now, let me uh, make a comment here. So here we'll uh, consider, I like to contrast uh, what we see with these bridges using the gauge gravity duality and uh, the entanglement we have in ordinary Minkowski space with a quantum field theory Minkowski space. So if we have a quantum field theory Minkowski space, we can expand it in terms of the Rinder vacuum and we get a formula like this where here T is zero. Um, so, and that particular state is the Minkowski vacuum. Now we can act on this Minkowski vacuum with a unitary operator, which introduces this phase. And if we continue to interpret this as a state uh, on these slice, it would be a very singular state. It would be a state that, uh, well, in, would have a firewall, let's say. Uh, so that state would be singular in flat space. On the other hand, we could do, uh, that same state would not be singular if we interpret it as uh, describing the quantum field theory on these slices, okay? But it is singular if we think of it as uh, describing the quantum field theory on these slice. Um, now we can contrast that with uh, a similar uh, looking state, which is just to do uh, this time evolution in this situation. And we've seen what it is to do this time evolution. Uh, let's say we evolve here forwards in time, the left side. Um, and so we have this region of the geometry. And the geometry itself that we get is such that effectively what we're doing is quantizing the field, let's say along the slices that make the state non-singular. So this state is actually non-singular in gravity. So in this particular example, thinking, of the, th thinking about the effects of these phases in just field theory in flat space gives you the wrong intuition for how uh, the state, a uh, similar looking state, will look in the, in the gravity description. Um, now we can, um, so the thermal field state is one particular uh, state and we can view it as uh, produced by Euclidean time evolution on, on, a, on a finite size interval. So we uh, do a Euclidean evolution of finite size interval and then uh, we produce uh, the, this ent particular entangled state we were talking about. And we can uh, also produce many other states that differ from that state by adi adding particles to the hartle hawking state. And there's a precise translation um, be between a state with any number of particles uh, and corresponding uh, insertions of operators on the, on the boundary. Uh, there is a clear translation on, only if the number of particles is small enough that we can neglect the interactions. Uh, but in principle, I guess you could imagine considering even more complicated situations. Um, so this gives certainly uh, a, a map between uh, a bunch of states that have these bridges and geometric connections and a bunch of different entangled states. Uh, in the product of the two theories. Um, so what we learn is that these entangled states can be connected by a smooth, smooth geometry. Um, each entangled state corresponds to a whole region of the bulk um, with slices related by the wheeler the wheat equation. And different entangled states correspond to different geometries or perhaps the same geometry plus extra particles. Um, and we did not make a statement about how the generic entangled state looks like. I, I don't know how they look like. Um, now, looking at, uh, with this black hole, it's useful to uh, make, a, make a, produce a version of the Yams paradox. Um, so we'll uh, set it up in a way which is similar to what uh, Daniel discussed. So this is the first, uh, the, the paradox in the first paper. Um, so the bits uh, A and B are the same as, uh, as Daniel uh, had. So this is some qubit outside the horizon and then there is some qubit inside the horizon. Uh, in Daniel's description, there was, uh, and in Amp's description, there was a maximal entanglement between the black hole and the radiation. Here we have a maximal entanglement between a black hole and a second black hole. So the role of the radiation is now played by the second black hole. And 
in the second black hole it's very easy to find this qubit that uh, that Daniel said was very hard to find. In this example it's very easy to find. It's some uh, qubit here in the second black hole and this is just simply related to this qubit by just time evolution. Um, so here the qubit uh, A and A prime they are, rel they are uh, entangled with each other. Um, so in this, this description um, you see that uh, the qubit in the, the that the qubit in the radiation and the qubit in A are essentially the same qubit. Okay. Um, however, we can try to uh, to make the the argument the, to set up the argument essentially in the way that Daniel dis discussed. So we uh, first uh, we have um, we have the person outside. Uh, so, so he had the person outside acting on the radiation and distilling the particular qubit that was entangled with B. Okay, so this person would uh, here go in, uh, extract this qubit A prime, put it in a door, take it out of the uh, this region, take it to the boundary, and we are imagining this uh, this field theory as exi existing in some lab. Let's say it's a condensed matter system uh, where there is an experimentalist that can uh, take this qubit in a door and go to the other side and then send it in. Um, and so if uh, the experimentalist does this, then here we'll get uh, this qubit A prime and B and they would be maximally entangled. But this process of extracting this qubit would uh, destroy the qubit inside. So indeed, uh, we, we disrupted the, uh, the entanglement of uh, B with A by distilling this particular qubit. Um, okay, so um, here one of the things. Uh, okay, so that's a describable this. Um, so we can view the left side as uh, as um, processed radiation. So uh, it's been we can think that we took the radiation, we acted with this quantum computer that Daniel said didn't exist, and we pre we collapsed into into a black hole, which is precisely in this state. Of course, Daniel argued that this cannot be done, so I'm I'm going to ignore this. It's probably important that it cannot be done, but uh, I'm uh, I'm ignoring it uh, just because uh, just because it's good for this argument. So we can <laughs> we can imagine we produce these two black holes by pair production, for example, and then we can uh, argue uh, in this way. Of course, we would have to wait for a long time uh, to for them to be produced by pair pair production. So uh, some version of the argument probably still holds. But anyway, so this setup allows us to start with a certain configuration and then run the AMPS uh, paradox argument here and see what it, the resolution is in this particular case. And the resolution is that here by acting on, uh, on, the, re on the analog of radiation, we have produced the particle in the interior. Okay, so, um, and Notice also that this implies that some states are not smooth. Some states do not have a smooth horizon. So we could send through the left black hole, we could send uh, a bomb or any other thing. And uh, so certainly some states do not have a smooth horizon. Um, but then uh, this begs the question of what happens if we do nothing? What happens if we take a black hole and we let it evaporate and with the natural evolution of an evaporating black hole? Um, so in other words, what what happens when we have black hole entangled with Hawking radiation? Is there a geometric connection in that situation or not? And so, um, uh, um, in AMPS they propose that the picture should look something like this. So we have the exterior of the black hole, and here we would have very tiny, let's say, wormholes. These tiny wormholes that you have for spin a half particles that join all the way here across the horizon. Or perhaps uh, we could have a situation where actually all those little wormhole mouths which are coming from the radiation join in this region and we might have a bigger smooth uh, uh, smooth horizon which extends over a bigger region and I, I don't know which of these two is uh, the correct answer of course classical effective field theory and gravity suggest that this is perhaps the picture um, I think uh, how much I have three minutes um, well um, um, yeah, we can also, um, so one point that um, the AMPS uh, paper, so the, the one with two S's uh, made, was that uh, it's not necessary perhaps to do a complex measurement, but you can do an easy measurement. So 
Um, the version with the easy measurement is roughly the following. So we had this evolution from A prime to A, and we could uh, distill A prime, and then we would have a problem. That was the first AMPS paper. But uh, instead of doing that, we could do uh, a certain easy measurement here in the in the future. Um, and the evolution, the natural evolution of this qubit A prime is some very complex uh, state in the left black hole. And when we do the easy measurement, there will be some operator which generically will not commute with A prime, um, A double prime. So A double prime is the uh, the operator which is the natural evolution of uh, of A prime. Um, and therefore, you would destroy whatever information A prime had, and, and so on. So that was their argument. Now, in the bulk, we see that if we do an easy measurement here, it would uh, commute with this. Uh, with the qubit A. So we seem to get two different pictures, two different expectations, one from the, let's say, gauge theory and the other one from the bulk. Um, and yeah, so how, how can this be? So one observation is that measuring E does not quite destroy the qubit entangled with, with B because uh, that quantum information is still there, it's still there in the state. If you know, if you knew what the initial state you had, then that information could t still be extracted if you do this, uh, this easy measurement. And one way to understand that is imagine you have a bunch of qubits. There is the qubit B, which is, uh, so th this, all these qubits are in a generic state. So the qubit B will be uh, maximally, yeah. We divide these two, two qubits into two sectors. Um, and here, this, here we have more qubits than here. Therefore, all of these are maximally entangled with some states, with some uh, states here on the, produced by all these qubits. And uh, therefore, there is a qubit that we can extract out of all these ones here that is maximally entangled with B. Um, and if we do an E measurement here, we seem to disrupt this uh, naively. Um, however, that same quantum, however, we could have chosen a different combination of uh, qubits and um, which does not contain E. And then um, here there is again something that is maximally entangled with B. And if we choose this combination, the measure, do a measurement on E doesn't uh, destroy the quantum information. Now, this fact is uh, basically what underlies quantum error correction. And so uh, this is uh, similar to the story of quantum error correction. But so the idea is. It's not exactly, but it's the, the idea is that some version of quantum error correction, perhaps, or something analogous to this, those ideas, can be involved in constructing the interior out of uh, out of the states in the field theory. Um, I have a so uh, a general comment is that in the gauge gravity duality, bulk locality within a, an ADS radius is a strong coupling phenomenon, and so, for example, in ADS black holes are such that the proper time an observer spends in the interior is usually uh, less than an ADS radius, it's further an ADS radius. And so in order to really uh, know or, or find the interior is probably some strong coupling phenomenon in the field theory and uh, we probably need to understand some better, we probably need to understand better how to understand uh, this strong coupling behavior of the field theories. So in particular, to distinguish the disputative firewall at the horizon versus uh, the expected one at the singularity, we really need to understand this bulk locality. So, um, and I think that the proper understanding of the interior will probably also need a proper understanding of bulk locality, so of quantum gravity in the bulk, as uh, Joe and, um, and Daniel were also saying. So the conclusion is we discussed the CPR interpretation of the ER bridge, so the topology of space can be modified by these massive amounts of entanglement. Um, and a black hole entangled with radiation could produce perhaps a similar bridge, and this is probably necessary to understand uh, black holes which are maximally entangled with radiation. And the interior, what happens in the interior could depend on what we do with the radiation, so acting on the radiation is not totally innocent. If we do something extremely complex with radiation, we could uh, modify the interior in principle. And then we discussed the AMPS paradox, and we saw that in this case, uh, it's resolved by identifying, thinking about the interior as made both from black hole microstates and the states entangled with them. So, um, in some sense, uh, if you take uh, the point of view that complementarity uh, is the statement that you can build the interior out of the microstates of the black hole, uh, then uh, the AMPS paradox showed that that was wrong. Uh, and we are saying we are agreeing with that conclusion. 
Um, and we're saying the interior, you, in order to make the interior for a maximally entangled black hole, you need both the microstates and the states of, uh, that is entangled with these microstates. And depending on how it's entangled, you might see different things in the interior. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. Questions? Comments? Yes? I wasn't. Yeah, I wasn't quite sure. Um, were you saying that this Einstein-Rosen bridge is associated with particular entanglement, this thermal field? Double, yeah, or, yeah. Or for any sort of highly. No, no, no. It's, it's for this particular that state. Particular. Yeah, for this particular state, we have that bridge in the center. But if for we, a generic highly entangled state, you may not. For a generic, we didn't make a statement, so we gave a, a statement of what it is for this bridge, for the thermal field state for small deviations of the thermal field state, that is adding particles, um, and also for the time evolution of the thermal field state, uh, which is similar slices later in time. Um. Uh, yes? <laughs> Andy? So uh, at t equals zero, you, in the case where you looked at the black hole pair, yeah. um, there was, I think, if I understand it right, a pure state on a slice which is yes, uh, topologically yes, yes. S2 cross S1 minus a prime. Right, right. Mm -hmm. um, so Haw Hawking would have assigned to that configuration an entropy which would just be the sum of the two black hole uh, horizon yes. areas. Mm -hmm. Is there some interpretation of that entropy as an entanglement of, of something, or should there be such an interpretation? Um, are you talking about the entanglement entropy of the quantum fields, uh, or well, the quantum fields including gravity and yeah. And well, if you include in everything, thermal field yeah, double, yeah. you had you had an entanglement in the old stuff. You did you had an entanglement entropy between the two, uh, the two different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this is the same thing. I mean, the, the idea is this is an EPR pair. It's in a pure state. So the combined, two, the, the the combined system of the two black holes is in a pure state. And if you consider only one, you have the black hole entropy, just the traditional black hole entropy. Then the entanglement entropy is equal to the black hole entropy. But in, in, entanglement of what with what? In the, in the old ADS eternal black hole case, you had quantum state on one side and a quantum state on the other side of the throat. Yeah, so here, here, here we have a black hole. Here when you take the throat, you still only have one region, right? Because the, when you cut the throat in half, you well, the, we, 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 the idea is that we have a black hole here and another black hole over here. Right? Yeah. They are in this particular entangled state. So it's, an, it's like an EPR pair. And so if we do measurements only on this black hole and so on, we have an entanglement entropy. We can consider this black hole on its own as seen from the outside. right? And uh, the entanglement entropy is equal to the black hole entropy. It's, it's the same as for a spin system, right? Uh, okay, I wanted to interpret it to just talk about the state outside the black hole, but all right, I'll, we can what? work with okay. it. Yes, another question there. Okay, so this, the question is, uh, when you and the previous two speakers talk about the firewall or complementary, uh, complementarity, uh, the Penrose diagram is chosen to be classical or semi-classical, and this represents the semi, semi-static uh, black hole. So, but, but at the stage when the black hole falls from some collapsing of stars, or at the very, very late time, the black hole radiates very fast, the picture should be changed. So there's two issues. The one is the the event horizon, the different horizons like event horizon, apparent horizon, and trapping horizons. They may differ a lot. And the second is as the black black hole become dynamical, the Hawking radiation would not be a good approximation of the radiation. So this may differ, may make the pictures very different. So I wonder, does this? Uh, yeah, those issues yeah. goes through those arguments. Well, th arguments. those issues don't seem to be very important for uh, for the black hole evaporation issue. So, and this was uh, perhaps most clearly seen in the uh, in the examples of uh, two-dimensional black holes, where people could take into account back reaction of Hawking radiation on the evaporation of the black hole and so on. And they saw that uh, well, 
there is a tiny difference between apparent horizon and event horizon, but it doesn't uh, oh, affect. Uh, yeah, but I thought that like when you make those firewall or complementary argument, you need a global picture of the or no, space no. The, time, the, the, the right? nice thing is that for the firewall argument, you don't need the global picture. So they, they, it's an argument that is based on uh, looking at um, at the picture at some time, as seen by some observer. This uh, so you. For example, you look at the radiation, you distill this qubit, etc. You don't need to use the, the, the bulk geometry to calculate what the radiation is. It doesn't matter. Imagine you are at some late time, and you took all this radiation, you did whatever you needed to do, and then you look at what the description is of the black hole at that late time. Okay? Um, and so you, you yeah. Uh, and, and they found some contradiction with the uh, some of the the, the complementarity picture of uh, black holes at late times. So the, the picture of complementarity for black holes at late times was that we would have a black hole and it's in some, some set of microstates. They are entangled with the radiation. And these microstates also are supposed to produce the interior, right? Uh, that was the old complementarity picture. And they found that this was not, uh, was not correct. Um, okay, yeah. okay, thanks. And okay, well, let's thank our speaker again.